I've been working in clay for over 35 years now. I happened to stumble into clay by accident. I took a class because it fit into my schedule. I had a gap and this thing was going on and I got onto the potter's wheel and it was hypnotic. It was so uh, seemingly simple and yet subtle and, and had a lot of potential. So it was the potter's wheel that, that grabbed me. And of course, I have to do all the other stuff too, but it's still the part that intrigues me the most. I'm just one of those people that likes making things, and uh, it so happens I've learned how to make things in clay. And it's kind of in interesting to me, um, especially the part of getting things out of the kiln, putting things through the fire. Living the life of a potter for all these years has been a challenge. Being in business and being in an art business, trying to do good art, trying to survive, uh, it's all been very interesting. When I first started out in clay, the material was very much out of control and uh, the generally accepted wisdom is that you have to learn how to exert some control. You have to be able to make the shapes and the surfaces that you, you want and not just have whatever happens, happens. And after a while, you develop a, a level of skill, but realize perhaps that that isn't the answer and that really what you want is a certain amount of looseness. So my trajectory has been, as much as possible, to develop skills and then to try and uh, loosen up and discard some of the um, the rigidity that uh, applying skills implies. I think you learn eventually in clay that it's that it's a dance that you just it isn't just about you, and you have to you have this partnership with the kiln and the material, and it's it's only barely under control. And what you try and do is make this partnership work, but it is it's a series of compromises. The pottery goes through two firings. The first firing is only about 2,000 Fahrenheit, uh, about 1050 or 1100 Celsius. And the final firing is the high temperature, which is to 2300 Fahrenheit and 1280 Celsius. When I first started making dinnerware, I made plates and bowls and mugs and cups and the usual things all on the wheel the potter's wheel, and they were all round. Uh, around 1981, I made some dinner plates that were square, partly because the circle can get a little bit boring at times, and partly because my wrists were sore from the pounding that your, your hands take on the wheel, making a flat, round plate. And mm. On the other hand, when I make something out of a slab of clay to make a square piece, there is no pounding of the wrists. And so uh, it was just uh, as a, 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 a pleasant change from working on the wheel that I started making the square plates. But after a while, I realized I preferred the shape, that the square is a more interesting shape to look at and to to um, design. The round, uh, of course, is, is a great shape for a plate, but I just decided I would stick with the square. And ever since then, uh, we've been making nothing but square dinnerware, and since it's been selling, I haven't felt the need to go back. To me, what makes a good pot is the design. The fact that it is made by hand actually doesn't impart any goodness to the piece unless, of course, the vagaries of, of hand-making are part of that design. So in other words, really good machine-made pots, I think, are superior to poorly made handmade pots. That there's nothing intrinsically great about hand-making. When I started making pots, it was mostly to make the pots, and it was really about me and making the objects. Then I got a kick out of people enjoying the objects. Now my perspective has also expanded to include that 
people find these objects to be markers or mementos of the rituals and uh, the good times in their lives. You know, their family, living situations, certain events, um, commemorations of events. And what I'm saying is that now I'm quite enjoying the fact that I'm having the second or maybe even third generation come in to the showroom because to them, pottery reminds them of growing up, of, of their early life. And in some small way, our pottery has been part of that. I'm flattered to know that the pieces have been a positive part of uh, people's lives. When I sit at the wheel, I'm usually making something that I've made a, a version of before. So what I'm probably doing a lot of the time is reviewing in my mind past successes and failures and trying to learn from that. I think the life of a craftsman is uh, a, a life of striving to make the best possible work and to at least do as well as you've done before, if not better. Working at the wheel, you have this feeling that you're doing something that is like what other potters have done for centuries. And there's this uh, kinship that you have with them. You have this simple problem of the clay and the water and your fingers and the rotation. And uh, you, you have this similar problem of coming up with something good. And it's very interesting to compare and contrast what you do with what others have done before and what others will do in the future. But it is, it is really true. I mean, you sit there sometimes and you think, you know, there have been some real greats beforehand and it's a challenging bunch. The way my wheel works, I can control the speed with my foot just like the accelerator of a car. You don't have to pump it, but as you press down further, you go faster. It's, it's much more of a safe thrill. <laughs> Every time I cut, I cut, cut my finger, but you know, nobody's, no airbags are going to come out. It takes several days to fire the kiln, and when we're really busy with finishing pieces, we're doing about one load a week. Um, so that kiln holds quite a few pieces. They're stacked on shelves, and the uh, pieces have to heat up for about 24 hours and cool down for about 24 hours. During the cooling, most of the color is developed. And uh, what really happens is glass is formed on the surface of the pots. The glazes are mixtures of fluxes, colorants, and silica. And so we're making silica glass. Also, the clay is becoming hardened at the same time. And a certain type of glass is being formed in the clay that makes the clay hard. The, we describe the clay as being vitrified, and uh, there's the French for glass in there, uh, vitre. My logo stamp is comprised of my initials, E over L, and the horizontals from the capital E and the L are carried uh, through to the left as well. I definitely get a charge out of the fact that people enjoy using the pots, and it's part of their everyday lives. Thank you.